Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. In this episode, we're going to talk about another way you can use that FreeNAS system that we set up in a recent video, and that's backing up your Windows workstation. Now, you're going to say this is not sexy. There's other things that do. Yeah, you're right, but you would you rather run the risk of losing everything that was on there because it wasn't backed up, losing some because the backup hadn't been done for quite a while, or maybe not losing anything. But we'll talk to that in just a moment. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information for any items mentioned in this episode. There are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that's not going to affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. Now, first we're going to go over what we've had to do to the FreeNAS box in terms of adding some hardware to it, what we're going to do in terms of configuration, and then ultimately backing up that Windows workstation. Because even with a good backup, you may still lose something, but at least you've got a fighting chance to be able to keep most of what was there, which in the end isn't some better than none. I think the answer you're going to say is yes. Now, any time that you make a change in FreeNAS, like we're going to be adding a demand on it for more services, at this point I wanted to have another hard drive because I'm keeping the initial volume that I set up strictly for YouTube videos and everything I do to create that. So I'm setting up a temporary drive right now, and if this ends up going the way I think it will, then we're I'm going to be probably making a mirrored pair out of it, maybe a, uh, a RAID 5 pairing. Now, because we're adding more disk space to it, if you have just the 8 gigs that we started with, you're going to need more memory. Now, granted, this is just a 4 gig stick, but I added a 16 gig kit to it so that we've got even more memory. And when you get all that put in place, I would recommend when you boot the system up, then let's look at this type of screen, depending on if your motherboard has it. And I've, I've got a gigabyte motherboard. So it's, it's going to show you, okay, now we've added a fourth drive. So now they're in the P3 slot. We've got that showing up. So it that's, that's good. We added two eight gig sticks so that's showing so that's all there and it's also very important anytime you go near the motherboard even if you don't mean to and i i'm guilty of it i'll i'll admit to that make sure that you always double check your cabling and especially with the fans because as you can see right here all four fans are running so we're good so we're going to have proper airflow and that's most important so at this point let's go ahead and we're going to tell it to save and exit yes we're sure come on enter okay now we're going to head let it go ahead and boot on up uh, but i i had to have it in bios for you to see that because that's a good independent verification other than when you go to configure it in free nas that something's not working right so at least you know for sure all the fans are running it sees all the memory and that's a good thing to know that the motherboard at least sees it because that helps you eliminate possible issues when that does occur running okay and we're at this point you're you're up and you're running you're good so let's switch over to our management workstation and let me move the keyboard over here all right, so now, and the part, I'm sorry, I didn't cover because I was, I kind of got caught up in the moment is we're using a backup piece of uh, software, an agent really is the technical term from a company called Veeam, V-E-E-A-M. Uh, they're well known for their, their higher end systems, but bless their pee picking hearts, they've made something available for you know, somebody who's not running in that kind of situation to uh, to be able to properly back up. Yeah, it's a limited license, but guys, it's free. So, you know, that's they're, they're betting that you'll remember them into the future. So at this point, let's first go into storage. 
and then we'll go down here to disks again just verifying that FreeNAS can see it and it can because you're seeing one here that says unused so we're we're good there so we will go okay now we've gone in we're going to go ahead and add the pool so we'll click on add and we will create pool and we will call it backup and we'll just tell it to suggest layout okay that automatically says what we're going to do because there's only one drive and then we will click OK. We'll click Confirm and Create Pool. And OK, there's the name of Backup. OK, so it's there. Hasn't been used at all. Now if we go back to Dashboard, it might just show us that we've got another pool. And son of a gun, it does. All right, so now let's go ahead and finish the process here because all we should have to do is we've got that created and let's make sure under services see if there's anything else that we have to do we'll go down here to smb looks like not now we'll go into accounts here because I do have a user account already set up and this is one that I have used because of another NAS I've got sitting out here. So I'm going to sit there and just keep it the same. Uh, we are going to, okay, we've got it for YouTube. Well, let's just create a new user. How about we do that? That would make more sense because that way we would be less apt to do if have something go awry so we'll just call it backup user we'll call it backup backup all right and then we will go down here and let's go here and we will tell it we're going to give it go into the backup directory and we want to we'll basically just give it everything and everything looks good i always double check it when i'm creating a new user and so he has rights to backup but he doesn't have rights to the other okay all right so now what we've got to do we've got everything else set up to share this out but now we have to add it as a share so we're going to put the path in here let's drill down here and we'll call it backup name we will call it workstation backup and we'll call this windows 10 let's see Intel NUC, if I can spell here, NUC, Win 10. All right, so backup mode is going to be entire computer. It's nice that you can select uh, external flash drives or external USB drives. That way you can always make sure they get backed up. And we are going to do shared folder. And we'll click next and we will browse go under work group free nas and workstation backup okay okay uh it's going to require that's probably a good thing we have it so backup backup And I tell you what, we need to go in and double check that user account. I'm going to, I want to make sure that I set the password to what I, ah, was about to make it, about to make a mistake here because I was capitalizing the username, which is something I wouldn't normally do. And let's make it 
backup just for the purposes of this i'm gonna have the username and password be the same thing uh, your mileage may vary it's not something i would do in production but i'm just trying to keep this in the uh simple process and we got backup in there twice so let's not worry about that we'll just make it give it to the whole piece okay yes i know all right you excuse me i talk to myself on this when i'm doing some of this course i think that's kind of an accepted thing within the it industry and then we'll change the username and password Okay, now you can keep it for seven days. You can set your own retention so you can keep this from being uh, too, uh, too much overhead. And that way you can keep, like, if you back up every day, then you would keep it so that you have, like, the past seven days worth of backups. So we'll click on Next. And daily at 1230. Keep running. Okay, the event log off on when backup at target is connected. Interesting. Okay. And run the backup job when I click finish, which is what we want to do. Because it never hurts to have something running in the, just so that you know. This is, in, would you like to install a license file? No. And recovery media, what that's going to do, if you're not familiar with Veeam or some of the, the commercial and systems, you have the option so that, heaven forbid, the drive is toast, it either dies or there's another problem that it's just you're not going to be able to get it to, to work. Say, well, say the power supply goes out and it somehow damages the hard drive, which has been known to happen. This way, with the recovery media, you can do a what's called a bare metal restore. This will let you go from total nothing on the drive. It will get Windows put back on, all the files put back on. Now, what it will probably do is you're going to have to relicense Windows. Because Windows, if there's any amount of changes at all, and sometimes I think just for sheer grins and giggles that they're they do some of this just to to give some of us a little bit of uh, headache and let's go over and look here and see if we're seeing any activity on it. it's probably of course it's okay now we are seeing traffic that's good so it could just be getting ready to start and on the other hand it may just be deciding to be difficult but anyway you see the basic process of what's going to happen and let's face it, backups are not known for being fast. But would you rather have a good backup that you can count on or a fast backup that you might have some file loss? I'll let you make that decision. So that's basically what it takes to get it up and running. Okay, so now it's already starting to process. That's good. I just wanted to see where, where it stood. So it's actually starting to churn stuff and send it so it's still it's going to be a little while getting this done but you know what i've got other things i can be doing and this is not something you typically do during the day but probably at night and again this is something that i know backups are not the thing that any of us want to do until a hard drive goes out or an application does something it shouldn't and corrupts a file or deletes a file and then you pot potentially may have lost, like I did recently, some vacation pictures that I'll never get back. So this is a good reason in which to, to do the backups. So this is just taking the process through. You know, the VM agent is free. God love them. They did something, and they could have charged for it. And I'm sure that if it was a you know, reasonable price, I probably would have bought just to have the agent. But they're giving this away so that you get exposed to them and you think about them when you have to do this on a larger commercial scale or you just simply get to the point where you've got enough machines running that you want to make sure you've got the backups in place. So like I said, we've added memory. We've added a hard drive to do this on. And I'm keeping the backups separate just so that if there is a problem that it doesn't 
corrupt, say, what something else that's on the volume. I'm not saying that the Veeam software is. I've, I've been familiar with their company and then looked at some stuff for, for several years. But it just, you have to protect yourself at the end of the day. So you, you've got a good idea of, of what's going on. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube and if you're seeing this, you probably are at this point, you're going to see some videos on the screen that are the next steps to the one you've just watched or other ones in the same series or possibly ones that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on that subscribe button now to enable notifications. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.